Yes, welcome back from that short break. You're still watching Sunrise at Sea right here on CTV. Once again, my name is Apollo Saran. We continue the conversation we had in the Twitter jobs one. Today we are going to be discussing cultural diversity and tolerance. Well, what brought up this conversation or rather sparked it was because the executive director for UNAIDS, that is Miss Winnie Pianima, met with the Kabaka on the eve of the Kabaka birthday run and that was on 3rd July. And what sparked our or rather outrage on social media was because she greeted him while standing. Now a lot of people were not happy about this and they felt that she was being disrespectful while other people on the other hand went on to defend her and say that she is a free minded woman and she's open and educated and she has already made her stance before on kneeling. Today with me in studio to discuss this conversation even further is Miss Julie Sesang and she's a board member at the Uganda Performing Right Society. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you doing? And thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you for having me. All right, so before we get into it, could you please just briefly explain to the viewer what the Uganda Performing Rights Society is all about? Okay, uh, Uganda Performing Rights Society is, a, is an organization which deals with collecting royalties um, for its members. Uh, it basically represents uh, members, musicians, um, singers, writers, producers, and all the stuff that all those who deal with music, yes. and uh, we collect money from them for them on their behalf. So we only do that if you're a member. So basically, that's what you're going to performing rights society does. All right. Okay. All right, thank you. And Miss Julie Sesanga is an experienced and seasoned musician, and she's a board member of uh, the UPRS, like I mentioned earlier. So let's get right into the conversation. What is your view on Uganda's cultural practices and their diversity? Uh, you are aware that Uganda is endowed with, you know, um, different cultures, and yes. and um, we 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 we. We actually are so rich and 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 um, so so privileged to be having all these different cultures all in one nation. Yes. And I think we just have to we have to embrace all cultures mm -hmm. as they come. Yes, I respect your culture. You respect my culture. All right. I, I appreciate your culture, you appreciate my culture. All right. I think basically that's what we have to do. All right. But as you can see with what happened with uh, Madame Winnie Bianyuma when she did not kneel down to, to, to greet the Kabaka, actually that even drowned the purpose of her meeting to go and visit visiting the Kabaka because okay. she was meeting with him uh, on the eve of the Kabaka birthday run and he's Africa Goodwill Ambassador mm -hmm. for UN AIDS and uh, he has done a rather Buganda Kingdom has done tremendously in the fight against HIV and AIDS but just that picture on your screen right now yeah. just took away everything just took away the whole mini the, the the purpose of her visit and what was discussed so do you think that we can ever achieve a one Uganda where people are in sync with each other. Do you think we could ever achieve a Uganda where we have, we are accepting of people's culture diversity and we tolerate it? I don't think there's any nation where, where people, everybody thinks the same. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a different mindset. You understand? Everybody is, everybody's perspective is different about different things. Yes. You know, but um, uh, engineer Winnie Bianima greeting Kabaka the way she did, I think she felt comfortable doing that, and maybe he felt comfortable with her doing that. Um, I am a Muganda, and yes. definitely I'll kneel down. I kneel down for my mom. I kneel down for my uh, uh, my aunties, my grannies, whatever, and for elder people. Yes. That's me. It's just me. So that's her. We just have to embrace it. And, and I think we, 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 we needed to look at the 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 the, the the reason why she went and mm -hmm. not what she did. Yes, you understand because she's a she's a learned person. She's she's a person of a good heart, and I think she went there in and you know in 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 good faith and did what she, whatever she did in good faith. So yes. I think we just have to to accept what she did and. That's little. I mean, I, I, that's that's petty. It's it's something. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's something. Yes. If she did that, okay, it's fine. Everybody has a different way of doing things. Yes. Um, in Uganda, some people hug, 
others kneel down, yes. others nod, others, you know, everybody, we are different. So we just have to learn to live with each other and, and appreciate, like I said, appreciate one mm -hmm. another. There's a gentleman on Twitter called Brian Tamale and he had very choice harsh words for her. He went on to say, the likes of you ladies, you are the reason as to why Africa has lost her origin. Really? Do you, th do you think that we are slowly, you know, you know, drifting away from the things that make us African, that give us our identity, because there are so many other traditional practices that are also slowly, you know, being eradicated. There is the debate of bride of bride price now. because no one can pay you. <laughs> I mean, seriously, no one can pay you. Yes. How can someone say I, I paid bride price for who? Mm -hmm. Can can you can you really can you really calculate how much? One p puts in, in, in his daughter or her daughter yes. from the time she's, she's in the born, womb yes, yeah. to the time you met her. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you calculate no, that? No, of course not. So, so the, you can't pay bride price. Yes. It's, I, I think that, that that's, it's supposed to be just token. Yes. It's a token of appreciation, not yes. bride price. No. All right. So what are your thoughts on how we can preserve our culture as Africans, or rather Uganda as a whole? How can we just preserve our culture? Um, I think uh, we have to, to go with those um, traditions that um, are positive yes. and, and discard the negative ones, like, like the Sabinis, the... Yes. the Genital exactly. Yes. I mean, I think that's scientifically and, and morally, I think it, it degrades one and, and denies one of pleasures and whatever. Yes. So I think we just have to go with the positive ones and discard the, the negative, the negative ones. negative yeah. ones. Yes. So now let's talk about the music because music has played a huge or tremendous role in number one, educating people, sensitizing people and bringing communities together. Personally, I went to Budo Junior. I'm from the East. Okay. I went to Budo Junior and when I got there because it is um, in central Buganda mm -hmm. and the culture in yes. the school is completely the Chiganda culture yes, from yes. the dance to mm. I learned the language mm. there I learned how to cook the okay. food there okay. and all that so let's talk about how music has helped in harmonizing Uganda's diverse culture um like you know music is universal yes and um it is a language yes which is understood by everybody and um, everyone appreciates music. Yes. You, you, you might not understand what I'm singing about, but because of the melody contours, the, the rhythm mm -hmm. patterns and yes. everything, you will appreciate it. Yes. So, so we, we, have, um, we have different, because of our different ethnic groups, we also have as many yes. music. Yes. You know, as, as much music as... as as the groups of, of, yes. of ethnicity that we have. So, so we, we actually what we try to do right now is to embrace all these in one. Uh, like you, you can say, yes, I'm going to play, I'm going to write a, a song in, basically in Luganda. Yes. But then I'll chip in some Swahili, mm -hmm. I'll chip in some uh, soga, yes. soga words, or maybe some itesot, and you know, it's, 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 it's just multi-whatever. Mm -hmm. Multilingual, yeah, yes. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Very beautiful. Well, before we continue the conversation, we have now been joined by the Executive Director at uh, Uganda National Culture Center, Mr. Francis Peter Ojede. Nice to meet you, sir. Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning, uh, um, viewers, and I'm happy to be here to discuss issues to related to culture. Thank All you right. very much. Yes. Okay, so before we go any further, please explain the mandate of your organization. Sir. Uh, thank you very much. As you said, my name is Francis Peter Ojede, mm -hmm. Executive Director, Uganda National Cultural Center. Yes. And uh, Uganda National Cultural Center <coughs> is the apex body responsible for art and culture. Yes. Our role is basically to preserve, promote, and popularize art and culture in Uganda and beyond. All right. So that's that's what we do, and. and we are uh, located, uh, we, we sit at the moment at the National Theatre. All right. Um, but as you, as the word says, is we operate uh, countrywide mm -hmm. and uh, we try to promote art and culture throughout the country. All right. So please share with us some ways that you have promoted art and culture here in Uganda. I, I'm sure <coughs> most of you 
<clears throat> just one minute. Most of you have been following events uh, right from the COVID period. Yes. We have been doing uh, what we call co um, concerts, and there have been two, two levels of concerts. All right. There has been a, a concert that we're doing on TVs, like yourselves, and then we do a concert because of COVID restrictions, as you know, so that uh, the musicians and uh, all those performers would be in the studio. Mm -hmm. And then they perform, and then, of course, what they do is uh, the public would get entertained from their... Their, their houses and uh, on yes. TVs and so forth. That we did uh, over the COVID period. But uh, of late, we've changed a bit. We're now doing both TV and also on the ground. Yes. Uh, we, we now go to places. We started with Arua. All right. In a region, we had um, a big performance with artists uh, performing in that place and uh, relayed directly to uh, the TVs and uh, used the TVs because there was a main TV, but then <clears throat> they shared it with other TVs. So people were able to perform, many musicians, many performers, you know, DJs and all that. And then we, we, we had a big crowd there. And then we also had the social media platform on it so that people from the diaspora and any other places were still able to uh, uh, access it. We moved to Lira, the same. We moved to Soroti, the same. Yes. We moved to um, Barara. Well, of late, just two, three days, uh, one week ago, we were in, um, in, in, in Moroto. Massive. Yes. Massive. You wouldn't understand that the, the Karamojong are very gifted in, mm -hmm. in, in art. They played good music. They did very nice songs. Um, you know, in, in a combination of the Karamojong and also, you know, other languages, the Te Tesot, the, you know, the English, Swahili, it's beautiful. So you, you, you're bringing people together. And this is what we do in one area. Then we also have festivals. Yes. Which we, there's one particular one which we're going to have in November. We call it Uganda, UNCC Annual Art and Culture Festival. Yes. So in this festival, that is where we bring a whole mix of culture. Yes. We're going to have performing art, we're going to have visual art, we're going to have, you know, music, we're going to have, uh, you know, the, 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 the herbalists bringing their herbs and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be able to demonstrate. We, we, we're going to have, you know, nowadays there's a comedy, you know, a whole host of aspects of art and culture, including architecture. People will be able to come and demonstrate to us the architecture that we have in this country. Yes. So a whole host of domains that you have in, in art and culture, because at the moment we have about eight domains. So you'll, you'll be able to see it in one place. Yes. And, and, and with different people, different cultures. I, I remember the, the last festival, we did it online, but the last one, which was physical, we had a group, a group from Macholi, a group from um, you know, Mbale, yes. and then a group from uh, Kampala, and then we had also a group from Western Uganda. Yes. And all in the same area, and yes. performing, if it is music, they're doing their singing, and if they're dancing, they're all dancing, if they're doing their, you know, the 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 other art works and so forth and you'll you'll move from this one which was so amusing then you move to another one which is the uh, exciting so you would see different uh, perspectives in terms of art yes. and, and 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 they do it in different ways all right they do it in different ways so art is one of the things that and culture is one of the things that helps us because one, it is it helps in educating the public yes. of, of of what the people are. And, and also and understanding good, each other, helps yes, people understand yes, each other. Yes, the diversity that we have. Because if you realize that in, in, in Uganda, we have many languages that we speak and yes. we speak them. And you know when you speak a language, sometimes somebody will, especially when you do it in a drama or you do it in a music, yes. you'll understand it. Exactly. Even if, even if you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's the beauty and, and, and it comes out very nicely. It ties. That's why there's that aspect of culture in diversity. Yes. 
we do it in a diverse way and that brings in you know all sorts of enjoyment that you That's get true. from the culture and our culture is rich exactly. uganda's culture is extremely rich now when you go to food and we're talking about uh, the festivals mm -hmm you'll see a whole range of food that you have. If you go to <laughs> Fort Fotol, you're, yes. you're going to find the Firindas. Yes. You know, if you go to uh, Achole land, you're going to find the Malakwang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're going to go to, you know, all parts of this country has unique type of food mm -hmm. that yes. they, 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 they boast of. Uh, true. And, and each of them, if you had to eat, you you really are nutritious. That's you know, true. they're all natural and nutritious, made in different ways. They, you go to Bugisi, you'll find them uh, pounding their, 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 their food. And, 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 you know, and yes. it's am amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Uganda boasts of about 56 uh, tribes yes. and uh, 41 yes. living living in languages. Mm. Yes. Now the three main languages spoken in Uganda is uh, Luganda, which is yes. l largely spoken. Yes. Then there is English and Kiswahili. Yes. Kis uh, English was incorporated back in 1962 and yes. has now been adopted into our education system. Yes. Well, Uganda has four major ethnic groups, and yes. that are the Bantu, which are the largest ethnic groups. There's yes. the Nilotics, there's yes. the Nile Hamites, and the Hamites. Mm. Now today, what we are talking about about Mr. Oja days because what brought up this conversation was because um, uh, Madame Winnie Bianuma did meet with the Kabaka on the yes. eve of the Kabaka birthday yes. run, and it, she caused a whole star on social media because she did not kneel down while greeting him. So my question to you is, because I already asked uh, Madame yeah. Julie here, is yeah. my question to you is, do you think that we are slowly eradicating the things that make us Ugandan or rather make us Africa by not respecting cultural values of other tribes? I think uh, obviously as time goes on there are certain cultures that uh, get eroded mm -hmm. but I think uh, mainly if you ask me the, the the cultures are not going to go but of course if you if you went to my place I would give an example in my place yeah. In Lango, yeah. you come to Lango, you'll find that the the, the, the cultural issues yes. are still there. But of course, the young generation, some of them would want to adopt the Western cultures mm. in in favor of our our, our our local culture. But they do it just because they think it is the style, the in it. <laughs> but they don't realize that you know for you to be known your identity mm -hmm. yeah. and everything that uh, rotates around you comes from your culture yes your naming even your name will will be if if you're named like myself or jerry you know it is a lango yeah. you know you 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 talk about the type of uh, the the language you speak you you your native language because if it's, it's statistics and uh, research shows that People who learn in their original language mm. learn better than the languages that they learn. Yes. Sure. They, so, so you realize that you get lost if you try to copy too much. Mm. I'm not saying don't copy. I'm saying <laughs> appreciate. <laughs> yes. Appreciate the other cultures, the other cul and so forth, but don't lose yours. Okay. Because yours is the base. Mm. Yes. The others is for you to be able to appreciate diversity. Mm. Yeah, right. Because there are certain aspects of certain cultures which are very interesting, they're nice, you can really. Now on the on the on the issue of the Bianima respecting or not respecting uh, the, 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 the Kabaka, the Kabaka for me I think uh, really I, I think for us it was just thinking broadly. She's saying, well, I have my own culture. Yes. I, I would not want to mix my culture with another culture. Because yes. I think in their culture, probably the they kneeling is kneel. a taboo. Yes. Or kneeling is not something that you, you go by. Mm -hmm. But I think somehow in the Buganda kingdom, it is also another thing they say, if you are going to go to the Kabaka uh -huh. and you're going to meet, greet the Kabaka, you must kneel. It's a, it's a cultural thing. And therefore, I, I can see a little bit of conflict yes. in terms of uh, the diversity. How do you respect the other culture and also the other respect culture respects you? Yes. So I think it's, it's, it, <clears throat> that's the debate that uh, I think the, the easiest way is usually that there must be a compromise. Yes. yes. You, you must have an agreement before if you're going to do that. Yes. The Kabaka must agree and probably accept, uh, put an exception on you yes. uh, so that you can do that. Mm -hmm. 
But at the, at the same time, you risk offending the biggest population yeah, who will think that you're offending true. their culture. So yes. it's something that uh, is very, very uh, fragile. And, and, and for me, I would, I would you see, the, 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 the issue, issue is let's respect different cultures. Yeah. And if, if it were very difficult for that, sometimes you, you, you also try to avoid certain situations, situations yes. so that you don't get into, into that. But for me, I, I don't know the perspective she was coming from, <laughs> yes. and I may not speak for her, but for me, I would just talk about culture and say, yes, let's respect the different cultures, let's respect each other. And, um, and respect does not mean that take away mine. Mm. Mm. Respect exactly. means that you respect mine, I respect yours. Yes. So it's a give and take. True. So right. to me, that's the perspective in which I look at it. I like the way you say that there has to be a compromise. Mm. Yes. You have to talk about it prior, especially if you're going to you know, do it in front of the country. You mm. must have to come to a compromise. Yes, yes. Then if she wasn't going to do it, then I think perhaps a statement should have been released because everybody, a lot of people are very angry. Yeah. But you said something that has stuck out to me and I'd like to talk to you, ask you, Madam Julie. He said that um, it's okay to copy and the younger generation now is, I don't even want to say slowly, but quickly drifting away from their cultural values. Mm, I mean, mm. look at how many children can even speak their mother tongue now. Or how many of them can prepare food from their culture. Mm. Or even know how to dress from their culture. Mm. Because sometimes when you go to traditional ceremonies, yes. you Marriage find you are... I am in, I'm in Soroti. That's where I come from. I'm in yeah. Soroti, but the bride is dressed like a um, yeah. bride. Mm -hmm. And... So how can we fix this situation? How think, can we better think, involve um, our children? They say charity begins at home. Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's imperative that we all teach our children and grandchildren our culture and norms. Yes. You know, traditions and norms, okay? And values. What, what if, if, if you went to um, a Kwanjula of, of the Baganda, yes. you'd see even these girls, young girls, Dressed, dressed in, in the, the busutis oh, yes. and the boys in the kanzus, you know. So if, if that child dresses like that, she would grow up like appreciating mm -hmm. her culture, whatever. Her culture. Her culture wear. dress, yes. you know. Um, if, if you do not instill it in her, she won't. So even, even food, cooking, you know, you have to teach a child how to cook. If you don't teach her, who is going to teach her? Mm -hmm. You know, you, generally mannerisms, if you're not going to teach her how to behave, you know, how, how to treat people, how to respect people. That is why um, in Buganda, we kneel down for our elders. Yes. Mm. You know, even up to now, I, I, I have my nephews who kneel for my, for my, for my mom, yes. in front of my mom when they're greeting their grandmother. Yes. They all kneel down. I remember even my, my, my elder brothers used to kneel for, kneel, even up to now, they, they used to kneel for my, you know, we yes. are greeting my dad. Yes. I mean, just a sign of respect. Because that's how we were brought up. And, and um, the younger generation, like Mr. Jede said, is really copying. They're just taking in whatever is coming. You know? That is why even um, we musicians at times really get offended. You know? yeah. When you see someone uh, singing and, and she's dressed like half naked, yeah. yes. you know, it, yeah. it, you are, for heaven's sake, I am Juliet Sesang. Mm -hmm. I am not Juliet yeah. Robbins. Mm -hmm. You know, where I can wear those um, yes. uh, hot pants yes. and yes. shoot yes. a video. No, that's not me. I am a Muganda. And I have some values in me that other people appreciate. Yeah. 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 You know, appreciate. So, like I said, in music, especially in music, yes. mm. in performing us, they are drifting away. Mm. They're drifting away. Uh, singing or performing or shooting a video half naked yeah. is not going to make you a better no. performer. No. no, just just try to to get the skills and master your craft. Yes, you know, if you have a beautiful voice, even if you dress the way I'm dressed, these long biggie things, yes. someone will say, "Oh wow, she has a beautiful the voice." voice. Yes. you know, yes. it's not your body. No, yes, dancers are supposed to be sexy. That's what they used to tell us when I was in the Ebony's. A dancer has to have a sexy body, dress sexy in mm -hmm. a sexy manner, but not, do not overdo it. And then they, they do it on and off stage. Yet yes. they are two different people. 
Yes. The Julie on stage is different from the Julie off, off stage. Off stage, yes. You know? yeah. And what you what what you portray on stage mm -hmm. affects your your your, Julie, your character, yes. Your, yeah, your Julie off stage. stage. Yes. Mm -hmm. You understand? So musically we are drifting away. I think they we have to change their mindset. We have to sensitize them a lot. There's a lot of talking we have to do, Mr. Jede. Yes. I think you and Sissy will help us. Yes. Yeah. To um, facilitate the workshops so that yes. we can go around the country and talk to these youngsters and try to 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 reaffirm that they are who they are because God created them who they yeah, are. Yes. It's like yes. I, I I love singing jazz, but I can't beat them. So why don't I sing my lugard? Yes. Exactly. Which I master, master and sing properly. Yes. You and articulately. You mm. know, and why, why should I sing? Um, I'm trying to do raga, hip hop, and um, I'm dressed like those um, guys in Jamaica <laughs> yes. or, or in New York. Yes. No. no. Do your raga, your hip hop, dress decently, and uh, like I said initially, take the positive, discard the, the negative. negative. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, what has been the biggest challenge in preserving culture here in Uganda, Mr. I, I, I think the biggest thing that has been a problem is that people don't want to be authentic. Mm. Mm. People don't want to be themselves. Mm. You see, if, if, if we were to be authentic, which, which, which really uh, helps us, in you learn it in other areas of marketing, Yes. You, your brand, you yes. should have your own brand. Exactly. Do not copy other people's brand. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if I'm a Lango, and I've grown up in uh, those folklores, and uh, my elders used to tell us, you know, this is how we eat, this is how we dress, mm -hmm. this is, uh, you know, how we sing, I should be able to use that and perfect it. Yes. And make it actually come out because I'm sure. doing it. It is me. It is you. Yeah. But you see, trying to put myself in somebody's shoes is what is drifting our sure. cultures. Sure. We're yes. trying to sure. do a lot of coping. I want to be this person. And yet you can be yourself. And then you can be, in fact, in fact if you're yourself, you're better off. You're very authentic, you do things in the way that you've learned, mm. and you only make it better. That is the problem. Then there's urbanization. Oh, yes. Urbanization. And we used to media. have the rural <laughs> setup, yeah. yes. but the urban setup mm. has completely eroded our culture. They, yes. they, 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 are ni they are neither here nor there. Mm. They don't belong to the village, no, they, they don't even belong to the town itself, <laughs> although they're in town. Mm -hmm. The, the, the class in which they are in, the, the class in town is high, but they're in town, but they're not in a high class all the same. Yes. So they, they, there's confusion. People so they, are lost. They, yeah, people are lost. There's a lot people of confusion because of urbanization, mm. especially in terms of culture. Yeah. If you try to tell them that go to your original culture, mm. they will say it is backward mm -hmm. because they don't understand it. They don't know that that culture is actually the basis upon which they have been built, mm. yeah. the basis upon which they should project themselves. Exactly. Tomorrow, even if you went to Europe, which most of them want, mm. when they start asking, normally when you die, they start asking, where does it come from? Mm. Then they will say, it comes from Uganda. In Uganda, they'll say, where do you come from? Mm. They say, from Lango. Where in Lango? They'll take you to your roots. Mm. Yes. And that's, that's the identity that yes. you your own. So why don't you promote that identity of yours and appreciate you want to copy it, and appreciate yeah. it? Yes. So for me, I think that is the urbanization and the, the copycat mm. mentality. Yes. And, 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 and you, you really, really have seen, I like the government program of, uh, of mindset change mm. because there is, there is that mindset that, uh, and, and you see it comes with, you see, people used to say, we, we, most of our, 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 our youth are getting into drinking. That's true. Not just drinking, too much. And there's no time on it. They start in the morning. Yep. Uh, that never happened in the villages. It never. People talk of drinking in the villages, but it never happened that way. People would go to the gardens. People would come back and prepare themselves. They would drink, all right, but in the afternoons. Mm -hmm. yeah. After Almost and in a, in, a, in, a, in a communal way. Mm. Yes. And they would, they would sit, drink, 
And in the drinking, it's not just drinking. There's they are communicating. Yeah. Yes. They are trying to socialize and t talk a lot of things, mobilize themselves. Mm. So it is not just drinking. No. So the, the olden way is, is different from what. But for us now, if you went to any town now, go now, you will find people seated on the verandas, mm. in the bars, yeah. drinking. Mm. They have lost, they are not doing work. Yeah. In the morning, you should be energetic to exactly. do some yes, work, yeah. serious yeah. work. Yes. To be productive. Yes. Yeah, productive. Yeah, They're productive. not productive. So, no. so our, our, they, they, that, they, that culture that is coming in, non-productive mm. culture. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that is what we should be fighting. They are not actually, for me, I don't even like to have them <coughs> associated with culture because that's not culture. Mm. Yes. Although we say culture is a way of life, but that's not the good way of life for one. Yes. So, so whose who's problem is it? Whose fault is it? Is it the upbringing? Is it the parents? Is it feminism? Because some people have attributed that to feminism, <laughs> especially the eradication of cultures like St. Neely, you know, Bride Price and mm. all these things. Now, some people on social media are like, because all oh, you women now think that you are educated, you can just do away with your identity. And that is actually just setting everybody back. So whose fault? What is the root cause of this generally i think i think um the root cause is like i said charity begins at, at home. home and home means basically mother mm -hmm. because mothers we we spend mm -hmm. most of our time with the children with the children yes than with the when than with their fathers mm -hmm. yes whether your your two parents in a home or one the woman spends most of the time with the child mm. so it True. is the duty of the the mother like i said to teach your child how to way of living yes and what to do and wh how to do it how to talk what to talk that is and, and to make you know when we were growing up, we used yes. to we used to go visit our grandparents yes. during holidays yes. Yes. and spend time with the judges. Yes. And they used to teach us how to dig, mm. how to cook, how mm. to you know oxibe mm. mere and mm. all that. Mm. And these days, uh, some women, some who are like you said, very educated. Yes, they have maids at home. Mm. Uh, they don't peel. Mm. You, you find that even the, the wife does not cook for the husband, mm. uh, so the children do not know how to peel. So you find a girl at campus, yeah. doesn't, can't, can't, can't cook, cannot cook. She goes to the market, buys peeled, peeled matoke, she goes to her hostel room, puts in the pan, and you know, f cooks the way she wants. <laughs> That's, you know? Yeah. yeah. They don't know how to cook, they don't know how to wash, they don't know how to clean. Yes, you find that a girl, a, a girl at campus cannot cook a meal for like five, ten people mm -hmm. mm. at 23 or 22 year old. Mm. You understand? Yes. So it is basically the mother, the mother's duty yes. to instill the morals in the child yes. and to make her appreciate her traditions and the culture. She, she, you know, and make her appreciate herself as you as me, as Mr. J.D. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And what makes you Sesanga? Mm -hmm. When I go and, like you said, go to Europe or go where, they'll ask, what is your name? Sesanga. Yes. Juliet, yes? Sesanga. Yes. Where are you coming from? I'm from Uganda. Mm. Yes. Uganda where? From Buganda. I am a Muganda. Yes. yes. That's what makes you, you. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. You understand? Yes. yes. And that's what I'm telling all these, um, the, the, the musicians. Yes. Try yeah. to to master your language yes. and, and try to create songs around, around you. your language, yes. around yes. your kingdom, you know, and around other kingdoms. Try to appreciate other cultures as well. Yeah. Like I said, we, we used to, in the Big Five, we used to have um, uh, a, a guy called Ekodelere Edela Kongu. He's yes. from, he was from, uh, from Teso. His father was from Teso and his yes. mom was from uh, Kar Karimojong. So, yes. so we used to sing in, you know, and they were so, the songs were so beautiful. The language is so beautiful when you hear it. It's so beautiful. Uh, when we were in, um, uh, I remember when we went to Austria and we, we, we were singing our Luganda songs and those, uh, the, the Dishir Vida guys were saying, oh, this is tonal, it's a tonal language. It's so, this is a blues language. Yes. Mm. And mm. our languages are so yeah. rich. Yeah. 
you know, so rich. Why do you think Nigerians or can can study in America? But they go back. Yeah, home. they do. They do. They they really appreciate their tradition and culture. They really really appreciate their country, you know. Okay. Unlike Ugandans. Exactly. Unlike Ugandans, and I think that's in a way, um, it's it's affecting our our promotion, um, uh, artistically. Yes. Because we cannot copy them. Yes. The only way to 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 succeed faster is by producing works in your language. Yes. yes. Just you can do it best. Yeah. Sing in your language, just incorporate other melodies and whatever, but mm. try to master this. You promote it and it will, will be success more successful than you trying to sing in yes, English. That's you true. understand? So like you say like uh, you're asking, I'm saying it's the basic of um, appreciation of culture is motherhood exactly yes yeah. yes thank you so much and at now because luganda has been the the mainstream or uh, mainstream language that was incorporated in music mm. and performing arts mm. but now we see a lot of languages from you know from from the east yeah. from the north also mm. now coming into mainstream yeah. you know yeah. music and entertainment yeah. here in mm. kampala as well and yeah. I, when yeah. i hear that i just feel very proud yeah. and also yeah. instrumentals yes um i'd like to give an example of a rapper called tom the myth Mayanja yes. and uh, his, uh, his latest album is titled The Ugandan yes. and it's about uh, 20 songs in, yes. that, in the album and yeah. he has incorporated you know instrumentals from the north, Different. from yes. the east, yes. from yes. the yes. central, yes. from yes. the west, okay. the languages he's, are spoken and sung in the, mm. and it has an, an urban you know tune and vibe yes. to it but mm. still you listen and you record and like I know oh, this sound. I know this, yeah. I know this language. Yes, yes, I know yes, this yes. word. I know mm. what he's saying and that is absolutely beautiful. Mm. So for my last question is what about intermarriages? Because a lot of intermarriages <laughs> do take place in Uganda. Yep. And you find that one tribe yes. ends up getting completely washed out in a child's yeah, life. Exactly. Don't you think that that is one of the problems? And how can we still preserve our cultures even when we intermarry? Mm. I think intermarriage is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Intermarriage actually should be encouraged because uh, it brings people together. Mm. It also helps us to be able to appreciate different, different cultures. cultures yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm personally a product of uh, an intermarriage. Yes. Okay. My, my, my father is a, is, is, is a Lango. Mm -hmm. My mother is a Kumam. Okay. But my mother is a Kumam, but also a Kumam who is associated with the Teso. Yes. Oh. And then my father is Zelango, but he also has an association with, uh, with uh, the Banyoro. Oh, wow. So you, you can see the, yeah. the, the, mm, the, the, so the, cool. the, yeah. the interlinks. Mm. And, if, and, and it doesn't take away anything from you. The, the most important thing is that that's why you realize that in, 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 in our cultures we say, do you follow your father's uh, lineage or, or do you mother's. follow your mother's lineage? Mm. Yes. In my case, I, we follow the father's Father. lineage. Mm. So it means that I must master yes. the Lango mm. uh, cultures Those, and so mm. forth. So there's no confusion at all. And like, like, like uh, my sister said, Sisanga said, the mothers play a big role in yeah. trying to do that. Because as a mother, if you, in our case in Lango, if you're married, you're married to a Lango, you join the Lango tradition. Mm. Automatically, you're part of it. And therefore, you must support your children to mm. appreciate that uh, yes. language tradition and language. Mm. What happens, and which you're trying to raise, is the, I, I, I raised it earlier on. Yes. I could even blow it much uh, bigger. Yes. The urbanization is what is trying. People say, think that if you're in a place like in Kampala, which is the capital city, then you have married, let's say, Muganda, and mm. you are. You are, you, are, you are a Lango. Mm. You, you, both of you would not want to uh, agree and use one language. Mm. Yes. So the, the common language that comes becomes the English. Yes. yes. So the two languages, the two I, traditions I, I get this. lost. Yeah. yeah. Which is not good. No. So the, the whole thing is for us to be able to agree that our children will learn the local language. You should mm. use it in the home. Mm. And even when you're married to another uh, area, you should learn that uh, learn the language in that area. So yes. That you're, you're able to support. Yes. So that the traditions and languages don't get lost. Yeah. This happens, and and I and if even in in simple things, you you see, 
if you went to study out, I would like to give you this as an example. I was in India, I did my course in India. Now, they will struggle to make you the first year to learn the local language. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, if you, any country now, yeah. they, they, in Europe, in uh, Asia, the first, if you go to China, you the to. first year is yeah, really learning the language. Yeah. And definitely, why do they do that? So that you're able to, able to communicate, mm. you're able to appreciate the cultures mm. and so forth. Mm. Now, that's the same thing that we should be doing in our car, even if there's intermarriage. Yes. The first few years, mm. if you're married in, a, in, 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 in that intermarriage, yes. learn each other's yes, language. Exactly, yes. So that you're able to communicate. communicate and that, yes. that and it's good. Mm. I'm not, uh, intermarriage is one of the best things that you can have because yes. then you'll be able to understand that. So for me, it is not a negative, it is a plus, right. except that we have to do it well. All right. Now, that's, that's the, the, but the, like you said, the, I, I, I like, let me just use that example of India for this case. Yeah. India has very nice phrases. Mm. The incredible India. Why do they say incredible? They say they have different cultures, they have different things that they do, but everybody appreciates them. Yes. Nobody yes. criticizes. Mm. Yes. You'll find an elephant walking on the road and you just say, oh. Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> what is this? Yes. An elephant. In, for us here, elephants don't, you wow. don't see them, but you yes. find it on the road. You will definitely go and, and find a snake. What? You, we talk of snakes. And you see a snake going around and nobody will kill it. They just use, you know, sticks to hit down. Mm -hmm. so and because doesn't... of the stick, the vibration that you hit down, mm. a snake walks away. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's the culture. They have learned how to deal with the. So they, 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 is that, they, they learned how to live with nature. Yes, coexist. And in coexist. Peace. Yes. And, and, and do. That's why they say incredible India. And they have another phase, which is what is we are talking about today the diversity of culture in India. Yes. Mm. And indeed, for me, I think, yes, India is a continent of its own with so much diverse things, yes. but I, I, I also see that diversity in Uganda. All right. We yes. are so diverse yes. with lots of food, different foods, mm. lots of languages that we speak, lots of cultural expressions, music, dance, drama. It, it's amazing as you, you put uh -huh. it in Uganda. It's, Uganda is also a very amazing country yep. in yes, terms of is. culture. All right. Okay, thank you so much. And we are out of time, but thank you so much, Mr. Ojede, for joining me on the show. And uh, Madam Sesanga, thank, thank you, you so much. Nice. I absolutely enjoyed this conversation. Today we are talking about culture diversity and tolerance, and you had it from them both. Let's learn to appreciate, and please be curious about your culture. Ask your mom, ask your father, ask your grandparents, make time and find out your roots. A lot of people don't know their roots anymore. Mm -hmm. Find out your roots and you will be amazed with the wonders that you'll find there. Yes, I spoke today with Madam Julie Sesanga. She's a board member of the Uganda Performing Rights Society and Mr. Francis Peter Ojede from the Uganda National Culture Center. Yes, he's the executive director. Well, that is all I had for you on this segment of the Twitter Jobs, but keep watching sunrise at sea and please follow us on social media because the conversation will continue there please let us know how we can properly preserve our culture right here in uganda well until next time keep watching sunrise at sea